Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to the public forum here at the group exhibit Hydrogen, Fuel Cells and Batteries. Also, I'd like to invite you to come and have a seat. There are complimentary drinks. There's a lovely lady. She's walking around and serving you with the drinks. And I would like to say hello and hola to all our online guests. We are also live streaming from the fair, so all different nationalities are watching us right now. This is the 23rd anniversary here of the group exhibit and I'm really proud and honored um, to have the next speaker here. We'll hear the chairman of the Spanish Hydrogen, Hydrogen Association and we will talk about the Spanish breakthroughs regarding hydrogen. For that, please welcome with me on stage the chairman of the Spanish Hydrogen Association, Mr. Javier Bray Sanchez. Welcome. Yes, we do. Welcome. Thank you. So, Javier, first of all, I would like to know a little bit about yourself. What made you be the chairman of the association? Well, I, I have been involved in hydrogen fuel cells for more than um, 18 years, 20 years more or less. Uh, I'm, I'm an engineer, this is my background, I have also a PhD in, in hydrogen economics, and uh, I have been working in the hydrogen industry for years. But uh, I realized that it's important that people have more knowledge about hydrogen fuel cells, about the opportunities, about what uh, that technology can bring to us. So uh, we created in Spain the Spanish Hydrogen Association, and uh, now I am the... You are the founder, is that right? You're one of the founders? I am one of the founders of the association. It was created 15 years ago, by the way, in 2002. And now I am, uh, I am the, the, the chairman. It's, it's a pleasure for me. To, to be the chairman of the association. Yeah. And you just said that so modest, that you also have a business background, right? So you are not only an engineer, but also studied business. Yes, uh, okay, I, I have an MBA and I have, to have the opportunity to be a CEO of a hydrogen related company for years. And I heard that you're also teaching, is that right? Yes, uh, that I started this year being a, as a, as a part-time, an assistant professor to, to a university in, in Spain, uh, teaching about hydrogen fuel cells, of course. So I see that you're in the right position. Now let's start talking about the Spanish Hydrogen Association. What are project? What, what are, where are you involved? We are more than 100 members, Mona. We are uh, people from the industry, people from academia. Uh, in, in, our, in our members, we have uh, not only companies, but also universities, research centers. And uh, we have a lot of people that is trying day by day to uh, promote hydrogen fuel cells and uh, creating, you know, an atmosphere around hydrogen and fuel cells that can, uh, ha can bring more and more interest in those technologies. And the Hydrogen Society is growing and increasing now members. Um are participating here at the fair, not only activities, for example, the Norwegian Hydrogen Association, there's the Hydrogen Council that was just uh, hosted in Davos, but also we have a Spanish Hydrogen Association. So what, why are, is an association necessary in each country and what, can in, what influence do you have? Yeah. Um, Hydrogen can be crucial in Spain. In Spain, we don't have uh, coal, we don't have oil, we don't have uranium. So we are importing 100% of the fuel that we need for our transportation. 100, everything. 100% <laughs> of all the resources are imported. The, for transportation, yes, that is. Yes. We, we don't have anything. We, the, the only thing we have is renewable fuel, renewable uh, energy, so we, we can create renewable fuels. But that's all. And that means that every year we have to pay 6,000 million euro. 
in uh, buying oil for just for transportation. So if we will be able to change that and create renewable power and use part of this renewable power to, gen to produce hydrogen, renewable hydrogen, local renewable hydrogen, that will be great. But we, we need that uh, we need the concomitants of politicians, of, of the public, of the citizens. We need that the society support it, this idea. And this is the reason for which an association is important. We are working every day with, with the public, with the media, with politicians, with companies, with universities, trying to create the, the, the culture in Spain about hydrogen. And why is it so important to educate the culture? Why, why not pursuing the government or the companies? Be because most of the people think that, uh, I mean, at the end it's the people that, that the one that should demand uh, this kind of challenge. And I have to say that hydrogen is very far from people now. I mean, people is not interested. I, I, am, I am very interested in, in fuel cells. I'm very interested in, in electrolyzers. I'm very interested in hydrogen compressors. But people is still not interested. I mean, uh, my mother is not interested in steam reforming. Uh, and, uh, but people is interested in vehicles, in their vehicles. People is interested in their homes. People is interested in their lives. So we, we think that it's, it's important that we explain, we educate the people that hydrogen can be very, very near their lives. And this is what, uh, what we are doing. If people demand hydrogen, then companies, politicians, everybody will start working on hydrogen. And this is the link to get to the end consumer, because, for example, in Germany, um, from all of the energy emission, the transportation vehicles are accounts for 60% of the emission. So imagining Spain having so much sun, sunny country, and so much wind power, you said that the country could run 100% on renewables. We have done the calculations, Mona, and we could produce all the power and all the hydrogen we need for our transportation. Locally, we could export okay. hydrogen. And, and it has someone done the math yet? Would that, what, what would that account for? Would that be as expensive as the current energy consumption? Uh, we, we, we could move a huge amount of money that currently is used in importing oil to create local jobs and to create local technology. The point is that in order to do that, we need to start the change. And I have to, I have to uh, recognize that it's very difficult to, to start the change when fossil fuels are so cheap today. Yeah. So this is something we have to face. So, so what can we do? Fossil fuels are cheap, it's just a fact. So putting a tax on or promoting hydrogen technology? We need to explain to people that hydrogen is not a real alternative. So this is nothing that this is not uh, something that perhaps happens. This is something that is going to happen. So vehicles are a reality. CHP with hydrogen is a reality. Uh, the technology is mature enough. So we need to explain to people that th there is an alternative. Second, this alternative is not impossible to pay for. I mean, we are not talking about uh, amount of money that are not in, in, in our budget. But then, once we have assumed that there is an alternative and the alternative is viable, we should make a plan. We should make a strategy, a step-by-step -step strategy to achieve to that point. And this is the point in which we are working now. If there are any questions from the audience, you can just easily raise your hands and I will come down to you and then I will hand over the microphone. Okay, so what, what is needed to, to promote the change? What is needed to have 100%, to run on 100% renewable energies, let's say, until 2025? Well, I could say that if we have a more expensive oil, that will help a lot, for example. But uh, on the other hand, I think that it's, it's necessary that we realize that the, the current system is not sustainable. A system in which every year in Spain we have to pay 6,000 million importing oil and we need to borrow this money because we don't have this money. And then we use this, this money to buy oil and then we burn the oil to produce CO2. And then we increase the pollution of our major cities like Madrid and Barcelona, even, even uh, with prohibition to uh, use your vehicle some days because of the levels of pollution. I mean, this is not sustainable. Well, what I stand is that per, uh, Spain is in a perfect, um, uh, has the perfect uh, situation that the state of the art is currently that 100% is imported uh, uh, with, with gas, for example, but then you have the opportunity. So, so what is really needed? What, what details? So, 
top three in, things. In the, in, the case, in the case of our country, in the case of Spain, what we need is strategy. We are passionate government in order to have a strategy that moved uh, the, our country, the, the current energy paradigm, to the one which is based on fossil fuels, to another which is based on renewables and hydrogen. This is what we are working on. And let's talk about the current project that the Hydrogen Association is promoting and maybe about companies that are already using hydrogen technology in Spain. Well, and now we are also, we have been talking about what we are doing in terms of working with our politicians, but of course we are also promoting projects with our members, with the members of our association. We are promoting projects. In Spain now we have uh, six hydrogen fuel stations in this moment. And, and that is two more than are currently in China. I think it's four <laughs> in China right now. We have six. And we are now uh, creating, a, we have two projects. One is creating a corridor between Spain and France. The other one is promoting another hydrogen fuel stations in Spain. So we expect to have 20 hydrogen fuel stations in three years. So this is what we expect. This is what uh, our government is supporting. And of course, with a strong support of the local production of renewable hydrogen. And for hydrogen stations, you also need the cars. So would that be public transportation or private cars? And mainly are uh, small cars from Toyota, Hyundai and Honda that uh, has a lot of interest. Of course, as soon as Spain is able to demonstrate that we have infrastructure, they will be absolutely ready to sell their vehicles in Spain. And the Spanish Hydrogen Association can already celebrate because last year there was a special event happening in Spain. What happened there? Yes, uh, well, uh, in, uh, as, as a tool in order to promote hydrogen and fuel cells in Spain, and as a tool also in order to explain to the world what we are doing in Spain, we, from time to time we make uh, international events. So we were able to promote the European Hydrogen Energy Conference uh, in Spain in 2005 and 2014. And last year, 2015, we, uh, we host the World Hydrogen Energy Conference in Zaragoza with more than 1,000 people came in and w from more than 60 countries. That was impressive. The World Hydrogen uh, yeah, uh, Energy Conference. And then more than 100 exhibitors or uh, countries. 62 countries, mm -hmm. 1,000 people. And what do you think was the best outcome? Well, the best outcome was to be able to uh, make a very great event. And now we, we are organizing next year the European Hydrogen Energy Conference again in 2018 in March in Costa del Sol in Malaga in Spain. So it's going it's to be a very good opportunity to have sun, paella, playa, golf, and a bit of hydrogen, of course. So what are you hoping, that Spain will break through or that the European countries will work together on promoting hydrogen as an alternative I, I technology? I hope to meet all of you in, uh, in 2018. We expect more than 500 people came into Malaga next year. So I hope to meet uh, all of you in Malaga talking about uh, the opportunities that hydrogen can uh, bring to Europe. It's really an honor to have you here on stage because I feel, really feel like that you promote the technology by heart and I know that you all will be excited to be there in the next year for the European, for the EHEC. Um, I was wondering, who are you hoping to see there? What, what kind of exhibitors are you hoping for? What kind of partners? Which industries? I hope to meet there all the people that really want uh, to promote Europe as a real leader in, in hydrogen technologies. Which country do you think is right now the European leader? I mean, uh, it's, it's difficult to say because it depends. Uh, if we talk about uh, automobile industry, I would say that perhaps Germany. If we talk about uh, power to gas or the hydro infrastructure, uh, then you have more countries in the north. Uh, if you look about strategy, there are several countries that now are pushing strongly hydrogen as a part of the energy strategy. So I think that in Europe, we can be very proud of what we, are, we have been doing. By the way, in, in the last European conference, we have a lot of people from Korea also. So uh, I think that uh, not only European countries are going to attend the, the EHEC, but also countries from Asia. Yeah. And I found that very interesting. Uh, 
I think uh, you're the first speaker that I was talking to that said, well, we need to educate the end consumer. We need to tell the people that the hydrogen um, technology is close, is very close, because you see the, the link between car usage, because most of the people have a car at home. So that's, you say that's the way to promote the technology. This is really close to the consumer. So, um, so this is, I think, is forward thinking coming from, from the from the people and not from the companies and not from the government. So that's a really smart way. Uh, it's, it's the first step. If you want to go then to the governments and explain them, hey, this is what people want. They want to have, the, they, they like higher infrastructure, they like the vehicles, they like, so try to promote um, policies, try to promote strategies that are aligned with this vision. And then it's very easy to go to the companies, to the industry, say, hey, look at that. Look at the strategy came in from the government. And what do you think, um, how, f how developed is the awareness regarding, uh, regarding renewable energies and especially regarding the fuel cell technology? Maybe well, comparing Spain to Germany? I think that uh, this is, this is uh, a, a pending activity, not only in Spain, but also in Germany. I think perhaps people that, uh, want, that knows about hydrogen fuel cells in Germany is, I don't know, 3% and in Spain is 1.5%. That means that in Germany is double than in Spain, but in both countries are very, very low. We, we need to increase the people, the, the awareness of the people, we need to increase the knowledge of the people and the education. And that is really important that you're organizing fairs like the EHEC. By the way, I found it very funny, the name EHEC. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, it's a European event. I mean, we, we, are, we are hosting it, but it's a European event. Yeah, yeah. Because EHEC used to be a virus in Germany, um, coming from, from Spain, I think. So um, <laughs> it's a little bit funny. Uh, but I, There's I, a lot of I'm Germans in, in, in Malaga, by the way. Yeah? I think that, uh, yes. Yeah. Marbella, I think, is the most important German city. Yeah. So um, besides uh, the, that you're organizing this, this, um, f this um, uh, meetups, which I think are really important, what do you hope for the future? What can the Spanish Hydrogen Association do? Well, we are uh, basically we are uh, promoting events, not only European or international events, but also local events, uh, trying to put together our the Spanish stakeholders. We are also uh, participating in different workshops with universities, and schools, trying to bring those technologies to the people that is being educated today. And also, we are trying to promote projects. Uh, and I, I would say that the fourth leg is to work with politicians, explaining them what hydrogen is and yeah. what could be the advantages for Spain. Yeah. Unfortunately, we are running a little bit out of time, but I okay. again want to thank you because I think um, you're really forward thinking, you're an engineer by heart, but you also understand the strategy that a country needs. And uh, I think you're really in a good position, uh, the Hydrogen, uh, Spanish Hydrogen Association. So um, if you do have more questions, then I highly recommend talking to Javier. It's really nice to chat with him. Um, the booth is located just across the public forum at booth number E63. So once again, thank you very much, Javier. My pleasure. Thank, thank you, you Mama. Gracias. And please stay seated for the next talk that will start immediately after I will leave this stage. So please stay and uh, then you will hear an interesting talk regarding uh, Energy Saxony presenting research achievements research activities and energy storage solutions from Saxony here in Germany and for that you will hear the Lukas Rohleder, oh sorry, so, deeply sorry this is not the right title, <laughs> not the right person. So once again please still stay seated and have another drink and then I see the speaker already there, you will hear um, Alexander Dick from the Next Energy EWE Forschungszentrum für Energietechnologie and he will talk about the scientific results for economic benefit inside the product ramp up for fuel cell system. Deeply sorry but still have a drink, it's on me. 